Hello, IB Economist, Standard Level, High Level. This 10 mark question, you're going to have to do two of those in your Paper 1 exam. What kinds of questions are they? They are explain questions. Basically, you just need to show off your theory here, nothing else. Just your theory, you focus on that. Explaining theory, that's what this is about. And remember, 15 minutes maximum is what you have to do a 1 10 mark question. That's so important. Because it's an explained question, you just need to go through theory, don't do any of this. There is no need for, on the other hand, no two-sided argument, don't be silly. No evaluation needed, no judgment needed at all. I still get students, even my own ones, I stress it so often, they still do it because they're not thinking. Don't let that be you in the exam, okay? No need to do any of these things at all, just your theory, that's it. Focus on that, explain that. In green, we have a kind of a structure, but mainly the core contents of what makes a good 10 marker. The 10 marker will be marked in levels. The examiner will read your um, essay. They will then have a table of levels. They'll match your essay to a level and then decide in that level, is it top of the level, is it low in the level, is it medium in the level. So you want to hit the highest level. In the highest level, all these key things are there. What do you need to do first? Define your key terms. The key terms in the question need defining. Any other key terms that underpin your answer to the question, define that as well. Diagrams. All 10 mark questions, you will need a diagram. IB examiners love diagrams. They design questions so that you can use diagrams. So always look to use a diagram. But when you do, key, key, key things you must do. You must label it fully, accurately. Don't make any mistakes on the diagram. Don't miss anything out on the diagram. Perfection with the diagram, that requires practice. But crucially, 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 you must talk about it in your analysis. You must. Don't just plonk it there and then assume the examiner will understand it. Now, you've got to talk about it. Talk about why you shifted curves. Talk about why the price has gone up or down. Talk about why quantity or real GDP has gone up or down, whatever. Talk about everything that's happening on your diagram in your analysis. The key thing is, you've got to assume the examiner is a non-economist. Assume that that person reading your paper has got no clue about economics. How would you then write and draw your diagrams? You would draw your diagrams and talk about them in a very, very detailed way, wouldn't you? To make sure the person understands what you're saying. That's what you've got to do with your diagrams. Also with your diagrams, I'd be like it if you can apply on your diagram. So instead of just price and quantity micro, you said at price of cigarettes, quantity of cigarettes, you know, you, you apply if you know the market or if you can work out a market to apply to. IB examiners really like that, yeah, really, really like that. This third thing is the core part of this question, depth of explanation, or depth of analysis I call it here, where you go through your theory in minute detail, everything explained really, really, really well, massively important. Like I've just said, Assume the examiner is a non-economist and that will force you to write in the detail required. Don't ever take that for granted. Don't ever think that I know my stuff, I'm going to take liberties. Goodbye grade, goodbye university potentially for you. Do not think like that, okay? I'm talking from experience here. You need to write in detail. And this last thing, just because it's last, it doesn't mean it's not that important. This is super important to tie your entire essay together your use of examples. I've been to so many IB conferences where the examiners constantly complain about lack of examples in paper one. You've got no help in paper one, have you? Just blank, just questions essentially, nothing else. So you've got to come up with your examples on your own, completely on your own, um, but you've got to use them effectively and throughout your answer. A lot of students plonk them right at the end of the 10 marker. They do all these three things and then right at the end, last few lines, oh, an example of this is this. That's not effective use of examples. Effective use of examples is that when you do everything in your essay, you explain your theory with examples all the time. So if you're talking about inelastic demand, that's when to use your examples. When you're talking about market failures and positive or negative externalities, that's when to use your examples, absolutely. When you're talking about AD shifting to the right for certain reasons, use examples. When you talk about the benefits of growth or something, right, or the cost of inflation or whatever, that's where you use your examples. You use them throughout your essay. Anytime you talk about theory, examples to back up whatever you're saying. That's important. Don't leave it at the end. Don't forget it. 
Uh, examiners in the past have said that weak examples will cap you at an 8 normally. No examples at all will cap you at a 6 out of 10. So you're in trouble if you don't use examples well. Alright, so this is how to do a 10 mark question. All the best for it. Practice it, especially under time conditions to make sure you nail it. And then these four things to do a really good 10 marker. Easy questions. You should be getting very close to 10. Good luck. Hope that helped. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.